What's going on guys? It's the Jimmy Fan here on Jimmy Master Animatronics. And what we have here today is a restoration video pretty much at this point over the Jimmy uh, Christmas animated blues um, blues version of the Saxon Santa. As you can see, he's got the uh, technically the Blues Brothers suit on and he did come with the box over there. And if you guys didn't know, I actually got this from Tyler X71. He's had this thing for a few years now and he finally decided to let it go uh, for me to put in my collection. Uh, so starting off, the, there's of course a split gear in the arms that's never been replaced. And you know, Tyler actually did a board replacement on, on this at one point because the original board that was in there um, had some sort of a sound issue and he, he couldn't get any sound out of it. So he had another one, so he was like, okay, I'll just... I think he had an a African American one and he put the board, the board from that in here and scrapped the other one for parts. And uh, the board works perfectly, no issues there. Um, I'm probably gonna have to do some resoldering here and there. Uh, but when I, when I received it, the spinning knob actually came off the hips. The spinning knob is fine. It just it was loose apparently, and it came off pretty easily. And what I discovered while messing with that is that it actually is starting to get a split gear in the hips. So what we're gonna end up doing is a complete tear down and rebuild of restoration. Um, I got the eight tooth, with this, which is gonna be for the arms, and then the ten tooth. For the hips and I'm probably gonna get like a lint roller or something to get all this lint off of it and dust from sitting up for so long and I'm gonna take you guys through the repair process so uh let's see maybe this will be a decent decent angle I'm not really sure let's lay it down here and I guess we'll start from the beginning so I'm gonna tear his head off here unscrew it actually you know what I mean Keep up with all your parts and pieces as always. And uh, this thing has been torn apart before and rebuilt or put back together again. So uh, we won't have any issues um, taking it back apart. Well, the head mechanism hasn't been taken apart because it's still got that original eight tooth gear in there that's about, that's about out of place. Um, In the meantime, though, I guess I'll just show you what it does, which isn't much, but it's something. And this is what Jordan would do in this occasion. Yep, see? So it really doesn't do that much overall, and um, that's why we're here today to restore it. Let's get this head off. I don't know how easy it's going to be to take it off. Just got to get it over that loop. That's the problem. You know what, guys? I'm just gonna pause right here because this can be kind of difficult. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we got the head off, um, which wasn't too difficult. You just have to do it at a certain angle. Um, but now that you've gotten the head off, uh, you obviously need to get the pants down, Jordan's favorite part. <laughs> and uh, this is um, this is where I showed you the spinning knob is missing. I, still, I mean, it's still in the package it's just off the mechanism and uh i'm gonna have to fix some of that stuff because it's not really hot glued in there anymore situate all that i'm, I'm gonna take it down completely um let's see here so what you'll need to do because you're gonna have to access this entire mechanism is flip the shirt over which usually works pretty well with the standards and i guess this one too and then when you flip the shirt over, you'll notice a little Velcro strap that goes all the way down the undershirt. So you obviously take that off. And then uh, you come across four pins. Or I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, two pins up top to the bottom, four in total. And you're going to push those out. Uh, okay, they're still 
locked in there. They've never been removed before. I keep forgetting that. So let me, uh, let me get my flathead here. It's funny, they look like they'd already been pulled out before, but I guess not. This one's going to come off pretty easily. I could already see that. Yep. There you go. Keep up with these guys or else you're just going to have to end up hot gluing it, which isn't exactly always the best alternative. And I think this one has like a broken peg or something, so maybe I can get it off a little bit easier. Uh, okay, I think Tyler tried to get this off. That's why it's broken. <laughs> Good job, Tyler. Just kidding. There's just a missing... Yeah. I can see where he's digging around in there trying to get it off, but... Let's see. You don't even really have to break it off. A lot of people think you just have to break it, but... Um, Really, you just got to loosen it up so you can get that pin through, which isn't always easy. Let me pause this right here so I can get this pin out right here. Let me show you what I'm talking about first. Right there. As you can see, Tyler's been digging at that a little bit, so I'm going to finish that off get this off and then we'll get into the heaven okay so I got this out and the piece still remains uh, there it is but the uh, the rod came out pretty pretty easily I'm just gonna pull this one out real quick and then it's just kind of free swinging from there <laughs> nice job twisting the wires on buddy well I mean that makes it easier for me so I can just disconnect it pretty easily but uh yeah get this uh, thing apart here uh, just to advise you guys four screws up front make sure the cap does go back up front because some people mistake it put it back in the back when they're done repairing it and, uh, yeah, let's okay get so I'm gonna show you uh, what I did I just unscrewed these four little screws in the front here make sure you put like I said make sure you put that back in the front where it belongs and uh, instead of pulling all this junk out from under here because there's a lot of those pop tabs and pop rivets and that's double riveted so it's about twice as hard to remove. So instead of that, I, what I did is, um, now keep in mind, if the mechanism's yellow, do not do this, because it can increase the chance of it shattering. But uh, I removed all four of these top screws and then the bottom screws, and then what I did is I split the mechanism open with a screwdriver, held it there, maneuvered the eight tooth gear in there, and pushed this in, because it's an eight tooth and it's a little bit way easier to get on like a nine or a 10. So that's what I did, so I didn't have to drag all this back out because you know it's sometimes these round out very, very easily. So once you take them off, it's extremely hard to get them back in line. If you especially if you can't put these pop rivets back on, you have to do that, or else you're gonna have some serious problems with this coming off and stuff in the future. You know, they did that for a reason. But uh yeah, see? Very smooth. And it should work perfect. So uh that part's taken care of. Now let's get into the hips. Okay, uh, now that I got the head fixed and everything, we're going to have to go in here and redo all these soldering joints because they are completely exposed and they were used covered in masking tape. <laughs> Good one, Tyler. So I'm going to have to uh, seal those up, insulate them so they don't touch each other. That's probably what was going on with it a long time ago because it wouldn't work right. And I guarantee you one of these two wires was touching each other and screwed it all up. So i going to have to redo all these solder points, which won't be too bad. There's at least six to seven different solder points I'm going to have to redo. But uh, once we do that, we'll go in the hips, put the gear in there, and then we'll be all set. So here we are almost two days later. <laughs> um, what postponed this project was that the, uh, let me show you, the spinning knob that this came with actually had a hairline crack in it, and it progressively got worse as I was fixing it up. Uh, but it has all new solder joints there. All the solder joints are fixed and re-soldered properly and hot glued. Um, and insulated. Uh, he's got a new gear in the arms. His hips are all fixed up now. 
Um, but yeah, I, it took me a couple days to find it because I had to rummage through a lot of those uh, parts boxes. I knew I had one somewhere, but uh, I just didn't know where exactly, so I was just searching a couple hours, and I finally found one. But um, the cool thing is that I could probably get this 3D printed as is because it's not exactly shattered, and uh, it should duplicate that pretty well. So anyways, I'll just go ahead and show you what we got so far. And we are finally done with the restoration. As you can see, he's been all restored and cleaned up. I uh, I got a lint roller to get all the lint and dust off his uh, off his clothes, and that worked out great. Uh, he couldn't be in better working condition than he is now, that's for sure. Uh, now let's get to the box first. His box is in excellent shape. Uh, and uh, thank you for again, Tyler, for doing this trade with me. I really appreciate it because I really needed him in my collection. Uh, it says Blue Santa. This cool Santa swings his hips as he plays deck the hall. Deck the halls and jingle bells on his shiny saxophone. I raise the saxophone to my lips to play. Now this one, unlike a lot of the others, actually raises it directly to his mouth and not like in his ear. <laughs> um, but yeah, love the box design on this. And it says, uh, this jolly cool guy belts out some hot holiday tunes and swings and sways to the rhythm. This Santa's got style. Watch Santa swings his hip, swing his hips as he plays Deck the Halls and Jingle Bells and his shiny saxophone. Basically the same thing as the front. And then on the back it says, Celebrate Christmas with style. This sophisticated saxophone playing Santa creates quite a mood. Not only does he play a mean sax, he swings his hips and dances to the music. And there's another image of him. Jimmy Industries Corporation, 2000. I always thought these were 2001, you know, because it's just such a different variant uh, compared to the rest. This is really the only offsetting variant uh, in the Saxophone Santa series uh, that, that kind of gives off a, um, a defined look. I mean, it has that look of the Blues Brothers. That's what it's based off of, but it's obviously a Santa. That's why it's called the Blue Santa. Um, but he's, he plays the basic um, Deck the Halls and Jingle Bells and stuff like that. So uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Got a new gear in here. You, you already know the rest, so I'll just go ahead and play them. The batteries aren't exactly the best, but they work. And we'll play his uh, set of songs one last time. So that pretty much concludes this review and restoration over the Jimmy um, Christmas Animated 2000 um, Blue Saxophone Santa. F so glad to finally have this in my, in my collection because you haven't—I haven't, personally haven't seen many of them—and uh, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.